Tier is best known as a CrossFit and triathlon brand, but how did they fare when making their first marathon racing shoe? Meet the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. What's up everyone? I'm Eric McIntyre, AKA Rad Dad Bod, and you're watching Rad Dad Bod TV, where we review running shoes. Today, we're talking about the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon, which is Tier's marathon racing shoe or super shoe that they released in 2024. Now, if this is your first time watching one of my videos, you'll notice down in the description below a number of different timestamps for the different aspects of this shoe review. Feel free to hop around, but if you do so, please come back when you get a second and watch the full video as I put a lot of effort into these videos to make them as educational and informational as possible for you. Now, before we get into the usage or price, let's talk a little bit about some disclaimers and disclosures. I was provided this shoe free of charge for the purpose of review directly from Tier. That being said, I'm not being paid for this review, nor was I asked to make any specific video. As such, no one gets to watch this video beforehand and all thoughts and opinions are entirely my own. With that out of the way, let's talk about the intended use usage of the shoe as well as the price point. The Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon is Tier's marathon racing shoe or super shoe. It's made to go fast, it's made to be responsive, and it's made to go the distance, and as such, that is how we will be evaluating the shoe today. Now, the shoe comes in at $250, which is right about in line with most super shoes, if not starting to get on the lower end of super shoes nowadays, which personally, if you ask me, is kind of dumb how much shoes cost. But again, with most brands' premier running shoes or premier super shoes starting to push the 300s, at least on some special editions, and super trainers kind of coming in out of nowhere being $200, $225, this is priced probably appropriately and kind of in that medium range of super shoes in general. Now, from a spec standpoint, this shoe comes in at 7.8 ounces, which is light, but typical for a super shoe, typical for a marathon racing shoe. From a stack height perspective, you have a 39.5 in the heel and a 33.5 in the forefoot for a six millimeter heel to toe drop. From a fit standpoint, I would say that this shoe fits for the most part true to size lengthwise, but kind of on the shorter end of true to size, but not short enough that you would probably want to half size down. As far as overall fit, you have a pretty accommodating fit overall. I don't I don't think I'd really call it like a wide fitting shoe, um, but I do feel like it gives ample room all around. And so if you are a wide footed runner, this is probably one of the better super shoe options for you. The nice thing is even with a slightly wider fit, I don't feel like you're sacrificing any lockdown. And we'll talk about that next with the upper. The upper uses a material called hyperweave, which is this really, really nice kind of breathable mesh or weave material. You have a fully gusseted tongue to keep that tongue in place. Plus the laces run through some loops on said tongue a couple of different times to keep that really locked down. The midfoot lockdown feels really, really nice despite the shoe being a little bit wider and more accommodating. And so even if you are on the kind of normal range or maybe even like narrower range of kind of your preferred fit, I do feel like you can cinch down these laces without getting that lace bite, which is nice and still get a really nice fit and lockdown in the shoe. That toe box, like we talked about, is going to be really, really roomy, which is going to allow your toes to splay and spread, which is nice. And then as far as kind of just the overall construction of the upper it feels very, very durable, and you have some really nice strategically placed cushion in the heel, but not more than is necessary, as this is a racing shoe, so they were trying to save weight in various places. Moving on to the midsole of the shoe, you have a P-Bax midsole or a Piba base midsole, as well as a carbon fiber plate that runs throughout the shoe, hence the name Elite carbon. Now, Piba usage in general used to kind of incite like one specific feeling, but different brands have found different ways to kind of tune that midsole. And I feel like Tears midsole tooling, very similar to the kind of early models of the Saucony Endorphin line. You're gonna get like a lot of give, a lot of squish in the shoe, but when you run in it, you're gonna get a lot of that pop and a lot of kind of that punch. The carbon fiber plate in this shoe is a very rigid plate. And so it adds like a lot of snap, a lot of like pop there. And I do feel like this shoe, when compared to other super shoes, is more of kind of like the punchy snappy variety as opposed to kind of that smooth, soft rolling style. Now, speaking about kind of that mid so feel this shoe has kind of that early stage rocker where it kind of spikes up right here in the forefoot area and because of that it does feel like it wants to be on the toes right you do want to kind of be on the balls of your foot or at least the shoe kind of pushes your foot that way and propels you that way so if that's not how you typically run then it may feel a little bit clunky for you as you're trying to cover longer distances i know for me in particular anytime a shoe kind of pushes me onto my toes or onto the forefoot then the shoe kind of gets delegated or relegated as more of like a speed day option rather than a marathon 
on race day option. And that is the case for me with this shoe. I feel like it's a little bit too bouncy, a little bit too punchy. It's really, really fast. So I love it on the track. I love it for like repeats on the road. If we're doing like quarter mile repeats, maybe even mile repeats, like this is an excellent shoe. But if I were to say like, I'm going to go run a marathon tomorrow, I would be a little bit worried that my muscles would kind of break down and fatigue too much from the aggressiveness of this shoe, um, which again is not a bad thing. Um, it's a very fast shoe and I'm really, really impressed by the midsole but you just have to know kind of your feet, your legs, and how your body responds to those different sensations. Now, one thing that was a little bit surprising is with this type of Piba foam with the bounce and punch it has, I usually feel like these are gonna be really, really unstable shoes, and it is a super shoe, don't get me wrong. It's not a stable shoe. No super shoe is actually inherently stable, but it is up there with like, the CLOX, as far as stability for a super shoe, it is one of the more stable options overall. But if you're talking about kind of that feel underfoot, it is a little bit firmer and a little bit punchier than the Valkyrie Speedworks, which is the training companion to it. So if you run in the Speedworks, don't expect the exact same tooling and, and feel underfoot in the Carbon Elite or Elite Carbon. I will say that this might be one of the most responsive midsoles while as far as like midsole propulsion though um, and underfoot feel, I feel like it's more reminiscent or similar to something like the Alpha Fly 3. Now from an outsole perspective, you've got that durable rubber and you've got great rubber cover across um, throughout, but not excessive rubber usage to reduce kind of some of that weight. I feel like Tears done a really, really good job though of giving you like a nice durable rubber instead of like a tiny, tiny thin layer of rubber. So these shoes in terms of like that midsole durability, that outsole durability are gonna be up there and probably make the shoes last a little bit longer than most super shoes because you get a little bit of extra protection there. I did run in the rain in these shoes and ran a little bit in the winter as well in these shoes. And that traction just because of that nice durable rubber was really, really nice. I didn't have to be concerned about slipping around at all in these shoes. Now, as far as who's this shoe for, I have to give that same disclaimer that I gave in the Speedworks review, which is that although Tier is a CrossFit brand and a triathlon brand, this shoe is very much a running shoe. This is not a shoe that you should be wearing in your Metcons. This is not a shoe that you wanna be weightlifting in. This shoe is meant to propel you forward, not propel you up, right? Not support you and be stable underfoot when you're lifting weights. And so unless the workout is a running workout, you probably don't wanna use this shoe. Now, obviously, if you're doing like some body weight workouts, things like that, then you're probably fine. But it's not a shoe that you're gonna wanna be doing Olympic lifts or heavy lifts on foot in. Now, as far as other use cases for the shoe or who else might benefit Fit or really, really enjoy the shoe. I do think that those who are four foot runners are really, really gonna love the shoe, but also those who are looking for a little bit wider and more stable super shoe overall, I think that this is going to be an excellent option. It's still very much a race day shoe, so you're not gonna wanna wear these for like daily miles. Um, and typically, I would say most people don't wanna buy a race day shoe just to do like their interval workouts unless they've got like a lot of disposable income. It's a really, really expensive option. But for me, I really do like this on track sessions and like interval sessions um, because I think the shoe does pop really, really well. Um, yeah, I think if you're someone who has maybe tried like the CLOX one and you really liked it because of the stability, or if you have run in, you know, the previous endorphin models, um, like kind of like the, the endorphin pro one endorphin pro two, and you miss kind of the same bounce or pop that those shoes had compared to kind of the more, uh, recent models where the, the tuning or the tooling of that foam feels a little bit different. These feel a lot like those early endorphin model lines. And so that could be like people who really like that and miss the original feel, this is going to be an excellent option for you. In fact, speaking of comparisons for this shoe, I actually think that this, the Valkyrie Elite Carbon is super, super similar to the overall feel of the Endorphin Elite from Saucony. Even just looking at kind of like the midsole geometry, I feel like they're similar. More so from this side where you don't kind of have that cutout. You can see that the Endorphin Elite kind of has that early stage meta rocker as well. So, so both of these shoes are gonna push you kind of on the toes. So there's a really, really similar feel overall. Now, I do think um, just kind of ball parking it. I do think the Endorphin Elite is a little bit lighter, um, but the overall fit of the shoes is very, very similar as well. And just overall width, I feel like the Endorphin Elite might have a little bit better midfoot lockdown though. I do think kind of the punchiness though of the shoe, very, very similar overall. And I think that if you liked the Endorphin Elite, you probably like the Valkyrie 
elite carbon and vice versa. The other shoe I kind of alluded to this earlier that I think feels very similar in terms of like underfoot experience is actually the Alpha Fly 3. Now the Alpha Fly 3 is a lighter shoe overall and I do think it might be a little bit faster but the Valkyrie Elite Carbon is gonna be the more stable option. Um, and I think a little bit cheaper as well. Again, just thinking, I believe these are 275 and I think these are 250. Um, but the reason why I feel like these two feel very similar is because of that Zoom Air forefoot unit in the Alpha Fly 3, you get a lot of punch, right? So like you hit the ground hard, but then you f kind of propel yourself forward based off of that like rebound effect. And the bounce from the forefoot of these shoes and how it pushes you more towards the front and the kind of that, that toe off, I do feel like the toe off of these two shoes is very, very similar. So it's a lot more aggressive overall feel of a super shoe and less so kind of that rolling feel of a super shoe. All right, final thoughts on the Valkyrie Elite Carbon. Um, overall, I said it in the last video with the Speedworks and I'll say it again with the Elite Carbons. I am very, very impressed with Tier's initial attempt at kind of performance running. Um, this feels like a third iteration shoe, right? Where the company has had two different attempts to get like a super shoe right, and they finally knocked it out of the park with this one. Um, this was one of the kind of like the featured innovation shoes at the running event in November of last year, and I 100% see why. And I'm excited to see what future iterations of these shoes look like, because if they're this good in version one, I can only imagine what they're gonna do in versions two plus. Um, I think that this shoe is going to be really, really accommodating and more stable, and so it's gonna serve a bigger audience but I don't think many people are going to try them because Tier is not known as a running brand per se. So hopefully these reviews from myself and from other creators can kind of get people curious because I think that a lot of people are missing out with this shoe um, just because they're gonna go with more of the traditional running brands because they just trust them a little bit more. All right, there we go. That's my review of the Tier Valkyrie Elite Carbon. If you're still here, I sure appreciate it. Please do me a favor and if you haven't already, like and subscribe and leave a comment. Let me know if you have any questions about about this shoe in particular. And with that, we'll wrap this video up with a question, which is what typically influences you to try a new brand or new shoe that you have never tried before? Let me know down below. Thanks everybody.